So welcome everyone to another interview of Invisible Architecture. I'm Carol Assa, and my guest today is Matt Rusky. And he's back for a second time. And I got so many great responses on his last um, interview and his last talk on electroculture and primary water. And people were telling me they went out and bought copper and they've been making the spirals in their gardens. So welcome, Matt. Hello, hello. <laughs> you inspired people. I'm happy. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to put it out there. So we were talking a bit about um, astrology and, and these copper spirals. You want to and it was so interesting. You want to share that with the listeners? Of course. So when we have the full moons coming up, which increase the energy and magnetism of the earth, mm -hmm. it actually yields us to uh, basically growing larger plants and, and more food. But it's also the best time to harvest right? So anytime you're harvesting your food, you want to harvest it around the full moon because oh. the perfect ratio of the plant with the sap between the, the tree sap and the actual plant. Mm -hmm. And so that is the best time to harvest and you'll get the best flavor. That's why a lot of times oh. when people used to harvest at the time, they would wait till the full moon, you know, the harvest moon or whichever uh -huh. moon it may be. Uh -huh. And they would harvest around that time because the fact that they get the, the best flavor and the most nutrients because the sap is perfectly balanced. And if people are using the electroculture with the copper, they're going to notice that into the next coming moon, which is in November, mm -hmm. we have the eclipse coming up. So the energy is going to get very strong on the earth. The magnetism is going to increase. The waves are going to increase. Everything's going to increase. So your garden should flourish for November because of that. And when putting the copper in there, you're just attracting that beautiful magnetism, which is all around us. And it was interesting because when I was studying about the full moon, I started noticing there were certain tendencies that would also occur, not only related to gardens, but mm -hmm. there was also the highest amount of crime, highest amount of accidents, um, highest amount of injuries that occur. Sometimes people would actually turn into a werewolf in their mind, right? That was mm -hmm. that whole thing of th that they would do as well, too. Um, if someone was getting a surgery, they're told never to get a surgery around the full moon because they actually bleed the most during the full moon. Mm -hmm. So a lot of interesting things that we just don't pick up on the magnetism of the moon and how it can also affect our crops and our plants. And then us as well, too, right? We get a big boost of energy. And now we're into the waning part right now on October 18th. We're on the waning part of the moon. And now everything's starting to get real calm and relaxed because that energy is starting to go away. And it's interesting because... There was a, a type of wood that they create that they learned about in the winter time, and I forget the name of it, but it's basically moon wood. And what they noticed was where they would harvest this wood in the winter time, basically in December after the moon has set at its full cycle and mm -hmm. gets the full moon. As the moon begins to wane, they would harvest this wood, and as the sap would come away from it, it would be the most durable wood. It would not rot. It would not get fungus. It would not get mold. It was very, very strong. It was drought resistant. So we've lost our connection to the astrology, like we were talking about when we first started, We've to the connection to the moon, because the moon has such an impact on not only our soil, our plants, our fish, our bees, our insects, but mm -hmm. also as a whole as well, too. So that's where the whole lunatic came from as well, too is the part that during the full moon, people usually, for the most part, there would be a lot of craziness that would happen. But then that also also impacts our plants as well, too, and their energy. Well, they always talk about two more babies are born. They put extra people on the staff at the hospital because it's the pull on the on the uh, fetus. Which oh, is yeah, because yeah, because the water, you know, you're pulling. Yeah, no, I mean, it's so it's, it's yeah. so much in our lives and so much of that's been forgotten. Yes. And the whole thing about the wood, you would think they would be pursuing that more. And it would, like, I've never heard about that with all of this, you know, that's so, what country was that that was doing? So that? that was, I think it was either Germany or Austria that they figured this out. It's, it's called Moonwood, I believe. And you can type it in and look up Moonwood. And now there's a company out of Canada that makes it. But he started oh. noticing when he uses this wood. Mm -hmm. The house will like it won't it, it will build no, no mold, no fungus. It, it won't fall apart. It's the strongest, most durable wood they've ever seen. But it has to be harvested at a certain time right after the winter solstice. So it's like December 25th mm -hmm. as the moon begins to wane. And they started to notice because all the sap has been pulled from the wood. It mm -hmm. just becomes the most durable wood you can ever use. And there's 
the other thing that relates to that is there's violins that are made from this wood. Mm. Most expensive violins on the planet are actually made from moon wood. So that's what gives that perfect tune, which is interesting too, because if you think about it, it's frequency, but then the wood also has a frequency. So they would use that specific moon wood during those times to create those. I think they're like violins that cost like ten to twenty thousand dollars or something, something crazy like that. Well, we didn't even know we were going to go there. That was so interesting. <laughs> okay. And then today we were going to like really go into, we never got into the uh, 5G and the electromagnetic fields and routers and all of that stuff. So maybe we can get into that a bit. Of course. So with 5G and all of these frequencies, everything, every we are everything frequency, right? We resonate at a frequency. We are an electrical being or an electrical device, whatever you would like to call yourself. You know, that's why distilled water says four electrical devices, which is also humans as well, too. But so what happens is, is we're constantly being bombarded by frequencies all around us. And if you read the book, The Invisible Rainbow, it goes heavily into this and it's 450 pages long. And I'll give the synapses in this talk as well, too. Mm -hmm. But it's a phenomenal book that talks about how electromagnetic frequencies, radiation, electricity, and all of that has impacted our health for the last indefinite amount of time. You started with, with radiation from comets and asteroids and those things causing outbreaks. We'll say we'll call them outbreaks mm -hmm. in certain areas as the comet flew over the area, that whole town would basically be electrified and they would start to develop flu-like symptoms, which were such as headaches, nosebleeds, dizziness, nausea. Um, pain, you know, hearing voices, whatever you would like to call it. So that was back in the, we'll say 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Then we fast forward to the 1877, which is the rollout of the power lines. Mm -hmm. And people started developing flu-like illnesses, which they started hearing voices. They started getting all these, the, the, the pain in the head, migraines, sinuses, you name it. And then, so that was when the first flu-like outbreaks, so we're going to call them outbreaks, but the first <laughs> flu-like outbreak came out was 1877. So then you fast forward now to 1919 and the Kansas flu, which was the introduction of the radio. And the reason I call it the Kansas flu is because it originated in a military base in Kansas. It did not originate in, in Spain, as they told us. That was propaganda during World War I that they used Oh, you mean, so you're talking about the Spanish flu? Yes, yes. So, oh, but you're calling it the Kansas flu. Yes, because it originated in Kansas. The oh. first actual case was in a Kansas military base, and it was because of the rollout of the radio. So when they rolled out the radio in 1919, people started experiencing the symptoms of a flu, which was the headaches, the voices. They started, um, you know, getting sick. They started getting nauseous. They started getting loss of smell, loss of taste, hair loss. They started experiencing all of these symptoms and people were really confused because when they started experiencing the symptoms of that flu, it mm -hmm. was in selected regions as if the, those regions were rolling out that technology in those areas. So mm -hmm. since there was a war going on, the regions in which the war was specifically going on, those people came down with that type of flu, which was the Kansas flu of 1919. So it was interesting because when that first technology rolled out, people started getting locked up and put into mental institutions because mm -hmm. they were hearing voices because they could pick up on these frequencies. So it was very confusing to a lot of people that all of a sudden people are hearing voices and they oh, don't... They're, they're picking up on the radio frequency. Yes. Yes. So oh. you tune into, let's say, 88.7 and all mm -hmm. of a sudden the person is picking up on that because these frequencies were introduced into society that have never existed. And since our body is an antenna, we pick up on all the changes, just mm -hmm. like the birds, just like the bees and the insects and everything else. Mm -hmm. So during 1919, you had the Kansas flu. And it was interesting because shortly after that, you had 1923, which was the Lancaster study. And that was the study to show that they could not prove that the flu was contagious. And this was really interesting. They basically took a bunch of people, put them into a quarantine environment. They made them cough all over each other, sneeze on each other, you know, do the whole shabil, mm -hmm. and not a single person got sick, basically. And they were completely blown away because they're like, well, mm -hmm. supposedly germs are jumping all over and that's going to cause the illness. Mm -hmm. But in reality, what we're not looking at is the technology that's rolling out all over the place. But then they're blaming the germs because in 1913, you have the Flexner report with the Rockefellers and the Carnegie's when they took over the medical system 
and got rid of terrain theory and pushed germ theory that germs are going to get you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the whole bait and switch. There's always a bait and switch with a lot of the stuff. So we have 1923, you have the Lancaster study and everybody should look that up because that blew my mind. When I found out that people were coughing all over and supposedly getting their fluids all over and not becoming ill, that kind of defeated everything of which I've been told. Mm -hmm. So then we fast forward now, we're moving into like the 1940s and 1950s. You have different technologies rolling out. You have the television rolling out, uh, black and white television starts mm -hmm. to cause headaches, starts to cause dizziness, starts to call, cause humming in people's ears. A lot of people start hearing a high pitched sound and that's just natural. They know a lot of people, you could say when you turn the television on, you know, it's on because you can hear it mm -hmm. from the other room. So that's the frequency we started picking up. Then they fast forward to 1967, which is the rollout of these like low level satellites or whatever technology that they put up into the air. And you start to see this Hong Kong flu, which became a popular thing. Mm -hmm. Then you fast forward. Now we go to into 1999 and the rollout of all these cell phones and the mobile phones and things. And people start getting headaches and all types of things. And we move into the bees collapsing, right? They had all this thing, pollen yeah. disorders, and they're talking about the bees and people are getting confused because they're like, why are all the bees dying? And they're saying it's the insecticides, but mm -hmm. they're not looking at the rollout of these technologies mm -hmm. and the radiation that impacts the bees, magnet, the bees magnetic abilities to function because they follow GPS of the earth. The ley lines is what they detect and that they go on. And mm -hmm. it was interesting because there was a kid who put a cell phone in a beehive and within 72 hours, all of those bees were either lost completely from the hive or mm -hmm. all dead. And that was just the change from just that cell phone alone. They knew that the frequencies were in there because they pick up on these things. Mm -hmm. So we go to through 3G, we go through 4G, you have all these flus, you know, mm -hmm. you have like swine flu, you have this flu, you have that flu, all these different flus that came out from the 1970s to the 2000s. And then we fast forward to 2020, just to make it simple, because the book will go through each and every one, and I'll, I'll talk more about it as well, too. But you go through all of these different timelines, and you see every time a new form of technology is introduced, mm -hmm. all of a sudden we start displaying the same symptoms. We start getting headaches. We start losing our sense of smell, lo loss of taste. We start losing our hair. We can't breathe. Uh, we start getting nausea, maybe bleeding issues. And that's because our body is an antenna. And in 2020, when the rollout of the fastest internet ever, ever, which is 5G rolled out, people started displaying these same symptoms. And the first places in which they displayed these symptoms were nursing homes and hospitals. Reason being is because the two first places that rolled out 5G were nursing homes and hospitals. So those people were being cooked and they started displaying these symptoms and they started telling people that it was, you know, the virus is jumping all over and now we need to cover up and, and do all of this stuff. But we're not looking at these new towers, which are being installed while people are locked up in their homes. Mm -hmm. you know, while people were placed in their homes and telling, were told not to go outside, they had vans going out and I have tons of videos on it, going into schools, going into buildings, setting up towers, putting up antennas. And a simple thing people can do is they can go to the website antennasearch.com and they can type in their address and their zip code and look up all the antennas in their area. Now I had a map from 2020 and 2022 and it showed the differences of how many cell phone towers rolled out. In the matter of the last two years, you have anywhere from 2.5 million to anywhere to 5 million cell phone towers, which went out in just the short time while people were put into their homes. Mm -hmm. And then those led to the health issues and health effects that people are suffering from such as loss of smell, loss of taste, because those are radiation poisoning or microwave poisoning. Now, back in the 1900s, during the 1920s, they phased out the, the, the diagnosis of microwave radiation symptoms or microwave radiation illness. They phased all that out because they knew in the future, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and so on, that they would have to diagnose that like crazy. We are one of the only countries that does not diagnose electromagnetic sensitivity or radiation poisoning. Other countries do, and they know these things, so their limits are much, much lower on the amount of radiation that can be emitted. First here in America and also Canada, the limit, I think, is 10,000 times the level of other countries. 
you know, so when you're putting out these new frequencies and these new spectrums and testing, like they're just testing frequencies mm -hmm. and putting out these new things, we are the test subjects, right? Mm -hmm. In this long-term experiment. And that's why when I started understanding why I started having health issues, I lived in a building. Mm -hmm. This was in 2019 and 2020. I lived in a building which had cell phone towers in the wall. And I didn't know this. And I started experiencing, I couldn't sleep. I started having headaches. I started getting dizzy. I like, I was always hungry because radiation burns your blood sugar very quickly. You know, that's why when we're holding a device, it, our, we get hungry right away because it's burning right through the blood sugar. So I started having all these issues and I couldn't understand it until I bought an EMF meter. And mm -hmm. I started going around my home and seeing that all these things were pinging and that there were things placed into the wall in which I did not even know were existing in there. Mm -hmm. And the charts were off, were, were off the charts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was wild to see all this, but it's interesting because they confused us with germs are jumping all over with each illness and all these Hollywood movies and contagion and germs are going to jump all over us. But in reality, the technology in which we're introducing into our homes is playing a big factor. And now you see people, they got AirPods in, which are going to cook the brain. Mm. You know, you see people with Fit Watches, which are burning the wrist. You know, you can type in Fit, fit Watch burns and things like that. Mm. Because the problem is, is unless we wear a suit, and that wouldn't even work, but unless, unless we wear some funny suit all the time, the radiation is constantly being cranked up. And that's why we have to go out into nature and barefoot ground and also get rid of the frequencies out of our home. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple different things that people can do with those things. And we can hit on that as well, too. Um, and I had I had one interview with Alana Moore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and she was wearing a big net uh, silver net top because she's so sensitive to all the frequencies. So it was it was quite a deal. She has to wear it. She's in Ireland and it's really heavy there also. So, you know. And that's the thing. It's, you know, that's the hard issue with this is it's like, for example, this guy walking on the sidewalk right now, I can see he has his AirPods in and his phone in his hand. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't understand that the frequencies are cooking that the body and cooking, especially the brain, mm -hmm. you know, and it's interesting because when you eliminate the frequencies from, let's say your home or from your terrain or from wherever you are at, you will start to pick up on them even more because yeah. the fact of now you're going to start to feel them because What's happening is, is they're hitting us at the cellular level and that cellular level causes a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting about the book, The Invisible Rainbow, is they talked about, this was very fascinating, that heart disease, diabetes, and cancer did not, in, did not exist until the introduction of electricity. So when you combine the combination of electricity and radiation mm -hmm. over here, you mm -hmm. have a plethora of issues. Mm -hmm. And we just post a blog up that relates to all this, shows all the studies and everything else of all the symptoms and all the things that people are suffering from related to radiation. But basically, they had this one study done where they showed in 2002, the country of Bhutan had no electricity. They did everything with the old school way, with the fire. They, they, they farmed the old school way. They did everything the old school way. And when they brought in that power plant, diabetes went through the roof. And that was only within six months. So it's interesting because you have people exercising through the roof. They're trying all these diets. They're eating all these different ways. They're doing all this mm -hmm. different stuff. But they're still developing these issues that don't make a lot of sense because they're like, I'm the healthiest ever. I go for 10,000 steps. I shouldn't have X, Y, Z. And it was the introduction of electricity that made those diseases go through the roof. And it was interesting because the people in Bhutan, they didn't change their diet. They didn't change their ways. They still ate the exact same. There was nothing different other than the introduction of that electric power plant. So it's like when I do like uh, feng shui, like, and I always, I take a fluorescent tube and then I put it in front of the microwave and so many times it lights it up just as I'm holding it. Cause so many of them leak and people yes. are just freaked, but that's the same thing you're doing to your body. Yes. You know, yes. you're cooking and your meat. <laughs> yeah. And with the microwave too, if someone has it in the home and they don't use it, just unplug it, just take the plug out. Because what I realized is, is when I took an EMF reader and I put it up against the microwave, like you just said, it's still pinging. Yeah. It's not even on, but it's still pinging. So just unplug it or throw it in the garbage, whatever it may be. But mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, these things are cooking and that's what's happening is it's cooking our cells. 
And we, our skin can only take so much. And this is the same thing with the animals, right? We have a huge thing that just happened last week. I don't know if you heard about the Alaskan crabs, but they all pretty much have vanished in Alaska and the whole population is gone. And right. people who are harvesting those crabs are totally confused. And I really have a good feeling that has to do with the radiation and the cell phone towers, which are rolled out in Alaska from 2020 to 2021, because these animals are very sensitive to this. Last week, we went to Laguna and we went out on the ocean and we saw some dolphins and whales. They're very in tune with all of that. That's why they beach themselves. They, 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 the frequencies make them go crazy and it impacts their brain and they can hear them a lot louder than us because their, their brain is a lot, lot, lot larger, but they pick up on these frequencies and they impact the animals. Mm -hmm. That's why we also have birds who are not migrating at this time because they get confused. That's mm -hmm. why it's interesting when you introduce electroculture, you actually build a safe spot for your animals so that the birds, the insects, and all of those things start to come back. But birds get confused because they spiral up in, the, up in the air, and they're trying to pick up on the magnetic ley lines. And mm -hmm. then if these frequencies are pulsing, they don't know where to go. And then they get confused. And then you have the same thing with the bees as well, too, because bees are picking up on the frequencies, and then they don't know where to go. So we almost have to build, in my opinion, things out of natural materials and harness the electroculture as well, too and start really understanding how to harness the earth's energy, because that will basically, in my opinion, create like a shield, but a protective barrier around us, because these materials that are around us mm -hmm. conduct a lot of electricity and build up a lot of static on our body. So, you know, some of the first things people can do, if we're going to go with the top three of things that people can do for healing their body, is number one, I would say is barefoot grounding and bringing your whole body out onto the earth, finding an area in which there's no power lines, there's no nothing, it's just nature, and mm -hmm. just let your whole body sit on the ground. And I'm talking your, your arms, your legs, everything. Because mm -hmm. even just the feet, I've learned, is not enough because you have, you have frequencies built up on the head and the scalp and the arms. And those frequencies can cause a lot of either heart pain, they can cause knee pain, they can cause back pain, you know, they can cause your brain to be foggy as well too because you have all the static buildup on the scalp so mm -hmm. barefoot grounding can be a great solution next you can move into getting rid of wi-fi from the home and mm -hmm. getting a hard wire which is just an ethernet cord and you just what i have right now uh, put into my computer is just an ethernet cord i plug that into the side and i disabled the wi-fi so whenever i need the internet i just plug it in and i'm good to go this way i know that i'm not pinging these frequencies throughout my house Mm -hmm. And they're not pinging every one millisecond because the problem with all this technology that they keep trying to sell us and these smart devices and all this nonsense is that these things are searching for a signal. Mm -hmm. And the only thing they're going to pick up on is our brain, right? And the first thing it's going to go for is the penile gland, which is in the center of the forehead. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people get a headache right in the center of their forehead when they're around a lot of frequencies because that's the first thing that's being bombarded. They're trying to shut that down because a lot of our logic comes from our penile gland and from the frontal cortex. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that's mostly impacted from these frequencies. So when we get rid of Wi-Fi from the home, we now no longer are pinging all of this invisible smog or electro smog in our home all the time. And then you can just use hard wires. And then the last other, well, there's other, obviously there's superfoods and other ways to heal as well too such as uh, different six mix, shilajat, and different things that I can talk about as well too. But the other biggest one is linen and sleeping on linen because mm -hmm. linen is the only material that does not gather a static charge. So when you sleep on linen, you begin to heal faster. And this is why back in the 1920s, they used to use linen in hospitals so that when people came in there, they would heal quicker and they could get them out faster. So it was very interesting when I was learning about that. Sorry, there's two trucks. But it was so interesting when I was learning about linen because it's the only material that doesn't gain a static charge. So the I didn't know. it's so interesting. I did a, a newsletter, a whole thing on this, and I was corresponding with this Israeli doctor who was radionically testing all the different fabrics, and it gave off 400 times more light than than any other. Um, she was doing it from that level, huh. from any other fabric, you know. And so that's why they used to have the tablecloth because it would imbue it with light and, uh, and you know, and they use linen blankets and linen pillowcase because 
then you're imbued in that light. And it was really oh. amazing. And, you know, cotton, all of those things were way down. Yeah. You'll have to send me that interview. That's amazing. Because I always have a lot of people who ask, and I'm like, unfortunately, a lot of the data that mm -hmm. I get is from, you know, 75 years ago and whatever, and they don't yeah. have a lot of examples. And the thing is, like, there's uh, places called, you know, linen now can just be hemp fabric or anything. But, you know, it has to be flax linen. Yes, the have, Belgian have flax, that. Yeah. And so the best way is to go on eBay and buy old pillowcases and that from, you know, from the chests and all the stuff they've saved. <laughs> Yeah. And it's, and wow. once you sleep on it, I mean, I can tell people like we switch to linen and you will sleep like a baby because you won't build restless leg syndrome anymore. A lot of people suffering from restless leg syndrome is too much static buildup on the legs. And mm -hmm. then their legs cannot relax because their legs are making friction the whole entire time while they're sleeping and they start to toss and turn and whatever it may be. Wow. So with having linen, you can't build up that static charge. So you no longer get those restless legs. Mm -hmm. And I've had, I don't know how many messages, but I'd say hundreds of messages of people when they switch to linen, they now sleep like a baby. And it's interesting too, that you say that of the frequency of light, because babies are also wrapped in linen right. primarily because they always say they have sensitive skin, but they just are more in tune. Right. But you know, they, so they, when you wrap them in linen, their legs don't move and they don't get irritated versus if they're in plastic, they're going to basically sit in, you know, a, a plastic material and build up a static charge and then get angry. And it's interesting because like all, even if you look at all the new stuff that they create, they always use polyurethane, plastics, you know, polyester, mm -hmm. all these things. And they're not natural to this frequency that we're used to having. Mm -hmm. And even too, with the, with the Royals, the Royals wear linen as well too, because mm -hmm. they know that when they're on a vacation, if they wear linen, they will begin to heal at the cellular level. The so, priests always wore linen, the little white linen around for their throat chakra. Huh. And, the, and the nuns wore the white linen underneath, you know, back in the Yeah, room. I remember that. Yeah. I remember and that. that was always white linen, yeah. Interesting. See, I didn't know it was linen that they were wearing, but I knew that they were wearing that. So yeah. it's it's just stuff that, and um, people have been sending me so many scriptures on linen, and it's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's there's these materials that are just so healing for the body, and we've just lost that because we stopped understanding frequency. You know, we've gotten used to where technology will answer our questions, so to say, but only to a limited extent. But then we're disconnecting from using our, our, our brain and answering the question ourselves or connecting to nature to get that question answered. Mm -hmm. You know, because when we go out in nature and we do, like I was saying, the barefoot grounding and being connected, you know, you start to, your, your frequency starts to raise even more. And a lot of this stuff doesn't impact you at the same time because your body is resonating at a higher frequency. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to lower our frequency and dim our intelligence or our common sense and all of those things with all of these devices and all of these things where we stop doing what we're na naturally good at, you know, right. and what we naturally pick up at and using our instinct. And that's the thing is when this whole nonsense began in 2020, you know, I remember the videos that came out that showed all the hospitals were empty. And that kind of threw a big red flag because I go, well, if it's so bad, shouldn't all the hospitals be busy? And I remember I got on an airplane and flew to Chicago and it was like nothing was happening. So I'm like, some of this doesn't add up. And then one day now all of a sudden we have to do this. And now all of a sudden you can't go out past eight o'clock because supposedly <laughs> at eight o'clock things are coming out, but they're not coming at 7.59 when I'm eating dinner, but just certain <laughs> things that just didn't add up. And when I read the book, The Invisible Rainbow and The Contagion Myth, both of those books, I mean, it changed my life forever. And that's why I advocated so much because when you have the knowledge to understand these things, you can make changes because if we're completely unaware, then we don't understand how something could be impacting our health. Mm -hmm. And then we start maybe looking at, oh, it's got to be this, or it's got to be genetic, or it's got to be this, but we're not looking at this, the frequency and yeah. all the frequencies that are around us that are impacting us or healing us, right? Like if we go into, like you just said, with the religious buildings, the religious buildings are built out of certain materials to right. create negative ions. And then usually they'll play the organs or an instrument in there as well, too, which will resonate the crystals on the wall, which also have a piezoelectric effect, just like orgone. Mm -hmm. So it will create a frequency to start healing. And also, too, all of those religious buildings are always facing towards the east because the most magnetism is on the west side. 
you know, so when it's interesting because they understand ley lines, they understand that primary water is usually below those religious buildings as well, too. They understand ley lines and magnetism. They use dousing rods and they understand where to put these buildings. But mm -hmm. we have forgotten these things or not been taught because our educational system was compromised back in the 1913 with the Flexner Report. When they were taking over the medical system, they were also taking over the educational system. And a lot of this stuff was removed. Or if you talked about these things, they deemed you crazy, which is that whole thing of putting people into mental institutions right. so that they can get rid of the people who also pick up on the real frequencies in which we are not picking up on anymore because maybe our senses have been dimmed down. I mean, even to be looking at how people in aviation are really questioning this. I mean, that should be a big flag, you know? Was, yeah, and, and the, the airplanes and all of that, I mean, even the weather people, right? Like the weather is very, I, I, right. I yeah. say it's unpredictable, but it's like you guys are totally off. Like it's perfectly sunny, then one day it's raining, whatever and it may be, but they're not even catching because mm. there's such either a delay or something. The frequencies are now altering things so much that it's like they were even talking about, I remember with the airplanes that they weren't sure if they could land them mm. because the frequencies coming off of the, the towers are impacting their ability to land. Right. So if they're doing that, they're also doing that to us. Mm -hmm. And when I was on antennasearch.com and I was looking up airports, I mean, some of these airports have 45,000 cell phone towers, oh. which is just insane. Oh. I mean, I, I don't even know oh. how you can even install that much and whatever else. You must be just doing it all day, but it's just crazy amounts. And even just where we are in Scottsdale, I mean, this northern Scottsdale area has gone from 100 towers, let's say in 2020 to 950 in 2022, you know, so this whole area is just, they're, they're just covering these areas and people won't understand the health implications until let's say a couple, let's say a couple of years from now when they're starting to go, huh, why am I getting migraines? Why am I getting nosebleeds? Why am I getting headaches? You know, why am I losing weight? Why is my, you know, why am I developing some blood sugar issues, whatever it is? And it all connected me to why type one diabetes is what it is. It's the over electrification of the pancreas. And in my family, we had type one diabetes and all of the people who I know who were born with type one diabetes were born during these periods in which the rollout of these technologies. Mm. So it was interesting because, you know, they will tell us, oh, or tell you it's genetic, but in reality, it's just, they were electric electrified upon birth and their pancreas was the one that took the damage. And then the other biggest thing that impacts the, um, the pancreas is electromagnetic frequencies. So it causes the blood sugar to become unstable and, and then the, the requirement of insulin. And it's crazy because they give people with usually diabetes, they get a pacemaker as well too. And that's also electromagnetic frequencies yeah. on the heart, which then those frequencies also diminish the eyes. And then those people with diabetes develop cataracts. So it's like, you see all these things that are all, you know, when you start connecting the dots and going, huh, that's why it all makes sense now and why people live that, like, that style of life when they have diabetes type one, but they never seem to be able to say where it's coming from. They just always say genetic and whatever else. But after I read the book, it all made sense that my family members who developed it, it all made sense as I started connecting the dots to go, huh, that really makes sense about your blood sugar, your pancreas, your heart, your eyes, you know, all these areas in which are all using the same nutrients are either being depleted or cooked at the same time. Yeah, it's just like the school system, like in LA, they were putting them up in all of the LAUSD, like all, so the kids are so, there's so much electromagnetic energy and, you know, towers and everything and around all these schools. Yeah. yeah, and that and that causes a lot of confusion with the children because their brain is not going to work at the same level and they're not going to be able to comprehend. And plus, when you install all these LED lights, which what they're also trying to push, which can emit Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi. And that's why it's important to put incandescent bulbs in the home and have mm -hmm. natural lights like candles as well, too. But incandescents are nice and soft and peaceful. But mm -hmm. LED lights, you know, can emit Wi-Fi as well. So these kids are going through, I mean, I hate to say it, it's like a big experiment of these toxic things. And then their, their comprehension is going to be impacted. Right. And I remember when I was a kid, my comprehension was impacted. I was bored and whatever else. 
but I also was always congested. I was always swollen. I was always having a sneezing sinuses. I never understood it was the fragrances and the food that I was eating. And then also being underneath fluorescent lights, because that's right. what at that time. And well, those they, still, they still do. LAUSD, almost all fluorescent lights. I was going to say, and those lights just cause mass confusion. I mean, it's like you just kind of are blindsided because all the mercury leaking out of them all the time and arsenic and lead and these things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the more we connect ourselves back with nature, the better we are overall and the faster we begin to heal. You know, mm -hmm. I just noticed for me, I just spend a ton of time in nature. I make sure that I go in nature every day and I'm out there being connected because I just feel better. You know, even, even I've noticed things with even going to the gym and this has been, I've been in the fitness world for a long time. I was heavily in the, involved. I, you know, train people, gym stuff, all these things. But I noticed even to that, that has been compromised. They have led lights and people, there's millions of devices, there's AirPods and all these things. So it's not, giving you that natural healing that you need versus when you said like even doing feng sh the feng shui and even doing tai chi or anything doing breath work outside is so much better because you're bringing in all those negative ions to heal the body and mm -hmm. you're being connected to mother earth which is resonating at 7.83 hertz you know which i just look at all the kids everyone's in rubber soles Yes. And rubber keeps you grounded. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know? So they're out on out on these uh, asphalt and the cement. I mean, they're just so that and they say they're ADD, but I mean, just look how ungrounded they are yes. just from what they're wearing, you know? Yeah. And I talked about that yesterday. It's just why did they sell us rubber soles to disconnect us? And mm -hmm. why do they put now synthetic grass all over these fields? Right. Mm -hmm. You go to the park and it's synthetic grass. You're not even touching dirt anymore. So you have a rubber sole and synthetic grass at the same time. So mm. you're never touching the earth to get that electromagnetic static that's built up on the body off the body. Right. And then you start developing back pain, knee pain, and brain fog. And that was the whole bait and switch. I think that was 1940s when they did the rubber sole thing. And that was because would they have a whole bunch of extra rubber from the war? So <laughs> they got to put it into something, you know, because that's rubber and chemicals. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you know, we got so many tires from all these things we were building. So we can just take that and turn it into shoes, you know, and that's the problem that we face is a lot of the stuff in which we're sold is always like runoff or, you know, some sort of toxic thing. And, you know, we mentioned fluoride as well, too. And we can go into that. But that's also a toxic runoff that was just given to us. And there was a bait and switch with that as well, too. Well, let's get into fluoride. So fluoride is a neurotoxin that builds up in the body and would be the, in my opinion, the leading cause of osteoporosis and arthritis. Mm. Right? So what happens is, is as the body gets older, it builds up skeletal, it's called skeletal fluorosis, which is the fluoride building up in the bones. And then the bones become brittle. Mm -hmm. And that's why as people get older, they start to break a bone, they may break a hip, break an arm, whatever it may be, because they've built up so much fluoride in the body that the fluoride has ripped all the calcium, the magnesium, and all of the minerals out of it. And mm -hmm. there was an interesting book that I read. It was by Gary Pittman called Toxic Torts. And he talked about how he worked at a phosphate fertilizer plant. And that's where the fluoride actually comes from currently to this day. So they have a runoff, which is like this sludge, and they hold it in a holding tank, basically outside of it. And anytime a storm comes by, it gets blown all over and it destroys the trees and destroys everything around it. But they basically hold all that runoff and they use that and put it into the public water supply because it's too expensive for them to basically like dispose of it. So mm -hmm. they basically bribed the medical association, the AMA, the dentist association, all of those people, they basically bribed them in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s to basically put this stuff into the water supply and say that it's perfectly fine. Now, it's interesting because when you look at fluoride, the first study ever done on it was done on infants without teeth. So mm -hmm. it was basically done in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they basically had a bunch of infants without any teeth and they told the people that if they used this fluoride treatment, which was sodium fluoride at that time, that they would not develop cavities. Well, an infant without teeth is not going to develop anything because it doesn't have any teeth. So they used this bias study to get their, you know, their, their hands into this as well and start this fluoride poisoning of the people. And it was interesting because they had two other studies that they attempted to do, but they had to cancel them because they, sh they showed such bad results. 
they showed that all the people who were consuming fluoride started developing more cavities and having more pain and more problems as a kid than the kids who were not using the fluoride. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting when I learned all of that. And it was also interesting that fluoride will cause aluminum to get absorbed past the blood brain barrier into the brain. So we're suffering with a lot of people from dementia, Alzheimer's, memory loss, and all of those things. And fluoride can be a huge, huge culprit because it's in the public water supply and people are bathing in it, which is causing the aluminum that's also in the public water supply to go up into the brain and lead to memory loss and Alzheimer's and all of these memory issues that people are suffering from. So Gary Pittman wrote this whole book on, and you can read it. He basically sued the phosphate fertilizer company. He is one of the only few people to ever sue and win. It took him 25 years to sue for his injuries, his health issues, his damages, all of the things in which he faced. And he wrote this book so people can become aware. And that's why I always advocate everybody to read this book, because when I read it, I could not believe the amount of information that was withheld from the American public about how toxic all of this stuff is. And they're just put it in the public water supply saying it's going to save you from cavities and your, and your whatever. But in reality, it rips the nutrients out of the bones and destroys them. And it was the interesting. The name of the book again? Toxic Torts by Gary Torts. Pittman. Okay. So he wrote that book, but it was interesting because in the 1980s, and everybody can look into this as well, there's a document called the Borax Conspiracy, which mm -hmm. Borax is sodium te tetraborate. It's a, it's a salt that can be used to actually pull fluoride out of the body. And there's a brand at Target called 21 Mule. If you mm -hmm. go to Target, it says 21 Mule, and it says laundry detergent on it. But it's interesting because it's just salt. It's all it is. It's 99% salt or 100% salt. So they, this guy basically realized if you took borax and he put it in tablets and he started giving it to all these people suffering from osteoporosis, arthritis, and all this pain, uh -huh. and he started noticing all the people were coming back like, I don't know what you gave me, but it's gone. And he had like a 90% success rate of all these people with arthritis, osteoporosis, pain, and everything else. They had pain in their hands for 10 years, whatever it was, and all these people were blown away. So he went to a company and said, can you make this into a vitamin supplement for me? Mm -hmm. And what happened was, was as soon as that happened, a big red flag came out and they basically banned borax in multiple different countries, including Australia, Europe, and a couple places. They started banning it all across the world, saying that it was toxic to the body because in reality, it was toxic to their profits that they were going to make off of the osteoporosis and the arthritis industry. So he basically, his whole business was shut down. He, I believe, was put in jail as well, too. But he put up a document called the Borax Conspiracy, which talks about all the results of everything with borax. And it was mind-blowing because he was just using sodium tetraborate, which is a form of salt that's actually great for the brain as well, too, because we need boron or our brain cannot work. And boron has also been pulled out of our soil, so our brain has become duller over time because we're not getting those nutrients in the soil. So he noticed with the salt that he could pretty much fix all these people. And it was mind blowing, but that can be a solution to fluoride buildup. You can also look into tamarind paste, which is a little fruit, which is absolutely delicious. You can look into shilajat, you can look into chaga, and then you can also look into cilantro as well to pull these heavy metals out. Because basically, if we relate this, the fluoride to the frequencies, when we build up all these heavy metals in the body, our body also becomes extra sensitive to frequencies and antennas. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, if you remember, were sticking magnets to their arms and doing all kinds right. of stuff yeah. back, in, you know, last year, whatever. The they have a lot of heavy metals built up in their body. That's why those magnets will stick. Oh. So, you know, they're picking up on those frequencies. So if you have a lot of heavy metal built up into your body, you're also going to attract all this electromagnetic frequency, which mm -hmm. is more detrimental to your health. And then also that builds up in the blood as well, too. So it was interesting because the whole fluoride thing, I mean, they pushed it so much. And it was fascinating because when they used the ads in the 1940s and 1950s, they used the ads of like, little Johnny has great teeth because of Crest. But they didn't talk about how little Johnny was drinking raw milk at that time. Uh -huh. And that raw milk leads to beautiful white, pearly whites. Yeah. That was the thing. When pasteurization came around, cavities went through the roof. So you had pasteurization and fluoride being added, 
And then now all of a sudden people started developing cavities. So they had to use more fluoride on their teeth and, and be told <laughs> that it will help. But in reality, it's going to cause the, the, the worst things over time. And the other biggest one with fluoride is that it calcifies or locks up the penile gland. Mm-hmm. You have that beautiful gland that's in the center of your head that looks like a pine cone that connects you to higher consciousness, all the energy around us and our, our instinct, basically. Mm-hmm. And that fluoride that goes in, when it combines with these heavy metals, it calcifies that area so that we cannot be consciously in tune. Mm-hmm. So if you look at it from two different ways, you're disabling people over time as they get older. And then you're also dimming their consciousness so that their awareness decreases as well. So you're putting the society on a lower frequency the entire time. And that's why, like, let's say a person doesn't take a shower for, let's say, two, three days or whatever else, or is not exposed to this, to these chemicals, they might have a a type of awakening during that time. They might go camping for like a week and be out in nature and they're just doing their thing. They're in creeks and primary water and all of that. They might have this awakening because now they're no longer being that stuff being put into their body. And then as soon as it's back on their skin, they might start developing skin issues and brain fog and pain all over again, because the fastest and biggest organ of absorption is our skin. Mm -hmm. And that works also synergistically with chlorine as well, which is the other stuff that they put into our public water supply. So people can get a reverse osmosis filter with a fluoride filter and they can put that in their home. They can also get countertop units or distillers as well, too. There's a lot of different solutions. But once we start remineralizing the body and pulling these things out, then a lot of this doesn't really impact us at the same level. It's just when we're constantly bombarded and we don't know what's impacting us that we're have, you know, that's it really works against our health. Well, I have uh, Berkey and um, yeah. Yeah. they have actual fluoride filters, like 99 percent out. So anyone it's on my website but it's just like the best thing i ever got a portable berkey you know you just fill it up every night and there's no fluoride in that water yeah and it's nice because you know you can filter these things and you can pull the stuff out and you will just feel better you know your your body will feel better and your body will thank you you know because in reality it's like if we keep putting poisons into it it's going to give you signals saying like what are you doing why are you doing this to me and now i'm going to give you signals like i'm going to give you hand pain so that you know you've been touching the computer way too much and you need to go out in nature and touch a tree you know and get those beautiful negative ions and and heal but we've been disconnected because we've now became where we have a, our society goes to the the professional we'll say they, that's what they call them But the professional who just says, oh, you've got this, let me give you this, and then let me give you this, and then, yeah, if it doesn't work, here's another one. And then we're never looking at the root causes of what could be causing these issues. And because there's a lot of toxins and a lot of things in our terrain, then it's hard to pinpoint. But that's why I tell people, just go through one thing at a time. You know, even from these videos we've talked, just look at one thing at a time and check Mm -hmm. those things off. And as you check off one thing and do something new, you'll start to feel better and then you can check off the next one and then go through. And then as you do those, you can then pinpoint and it's much easier to say, Hmm, you know, my skin condition that I've had for the longest time must be because of X, Y, and Z, but I never looked at it that way because I had all these other things that were plaguing me in between. Mm -hmm. Well, that was really interesting. (laughs) And then um, another thing I wanted to have you uh, look at was uh, organ energy, Wilhelm Reich's. Um, We could maybe go through, explain what that is. Of course. So Wilhelm Reich was a great scientist, phenomenal. He has so many books. You can look up all his books. He developed so many different types of technology to heal the body. He's up there with also George Lakowski and Victor Schauberger Mm -hmm. with using frequencies to heal. He created what was called the orgone box, which was a combination of different materials, such as wool and steel wool in multiple layers, creating basically like a pyramid. That's the best way to describe it. But it was a box that people could sit in. And then that box would produce negative ions, which would begin to heal the body, just like the pyramids do. Because the pyramids resonate at the same frequency as orgone. It's pretty much identical and overlapping. So Wilhelm Reich was ahead of his time when he was understanding all of this. He also developed different devices where he could basically green places and also help fix the weather because they were destroying and doing a lot of nonsense back in the 1950s with the weather and trying to just, you know, alter everything. And he created devices which he could combat all the stuff that they were doing 
which was considered the DOR, which was the deadly orbone radiation. So he was a mastermind with his healing techniques. And it was fascinating because one of the books I was reading was relating all of his work also to acupuncture because acupuncture is re-stimulating nerve pathways, which have been broken down because over time they've just been damaged and then they're not firing anymore. So his orgone box would do the exact same thing. And this person basically related the two perfectly together that when a person would get acupuncture, they would turn back on certain pathways, which were disabled, just mm -hmm. like they would sit in the orgone box. Uh -huh. And every, everybody can look up the orgone blanket. It's very easy to build. You just get wool and steel wool. That's it. It's, it's two materials and you can sew them together yourself and you can create an orgone blanket for your body which is a negative ion generator. And you can heal if you have pain, inflammation, headaches, you know, anything. And it was interesting because Wilhelm Reich was another one, just like uh, Raymond Reif and all the other people who were out there doing things with frequencies and they had crazy success rates. But mm -hmm. the only reason that Wilhelm Reich got a bad name was when he started understanding that he had people who were suffering from cancer and he started fixing them. And he started using the orgone boxes and he started healing these people. And that put a big damper because they were saying, you can't hear anything. You can't do things like that. You're not allowed to say any of that. And he's like, well, the studies I'm doing with people that I'm funding myself, because he funded all of his studies. He did not take a dollar from anybody. He did all of his work himself mm -hmm. and did not take a single penny from anybody because nobody would work with him. He would present orgone. This was fascinating. He would present orgone energy to the top scientists in the world. I believe Albert Einstein and a few other people. He sent them letters and tried to invite them over to come see and meet with him and talk with him and show them orgone. Because a lot of stuff he started understanding with the ether that's all around us didn't make any sense. And he's like, I got to tell you guys this because I'm learning it. And he wanted to bring people to learn about this and understand it. But every person would send him a rejection letter. Or if it was anything related to funding, the funding would always be kiboshed. So he just decided, I'm just going to do it myself. And then he basically started to understand orgone more and more and how we can use this energy to heal ourselves, heal our plants. He made an orgone generator that would um, help boost plant life. He created one like that as well, too, because he noticed that when you increase the energy in an area, it would also increase the energy of those plants. Mm -hmm. So he learned we could use this energy to heal or we can use this energy to make destruction. Mm -hmm. And the last final call was, I believe, in like 1952 or 1953 was when he got some uranium and he was testing that out with the boxes and whatever. And it just led to like darkness and all the animals getting right. really quiet and a lot of weird things happening. And I think that's when they decided, OK, well, he's he's obviously doing a lot, but he's also discovering things that, you know, if somebody else discovers them. It could lead to issues and whatever else, because that's how they always are. But it was interesting because right around the time of when he was inventing things, you also had the in, uh, invention suppress, the, in, the invent, no, the act of which they suppress inventions. I think it was 1951. And mm -hmm. that was the act in which somebody creates an invention. They have the ability to suppress that invention from the general public due to safety threats. And uh -huh. his orgone box and a lot of his work we're also in that category as well, too. So when I started reading all the books on him, I mean, I, I've read so many. It's just mind blowing the mm -hmm. amount of things that he picked up and understood about the stars, the cosmos, the, the ether. And, and it's interesting because he studied a lot of stuff from Mesmer. He studied a lot of stuff from Odenbach. He studied a lot of stuff from a lot of different people who also did this back in the day. And mm -hmm. those people were casted out. Mesmer back in the seven, I think 1780s, I think it was Mesmer, 1780s, he was creating a device where you would hold it and it was a, mag, a magnetism device and everybody would sit in a circle and there was water in the inside. So that would be the conductor and mm -hmm. they would hold these metal rods and they'd all be healed. And mm -hmm. once they caught on to that, they said, oh, we got to get rid of this guy. He's putting out too much. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was in, I believe in France with Mesmer, but all of these people who discover these things, Usually they try to outcast or then give them a bad name. Mm -hmm. And so when Wilhelm Reich was also writing about like psychology and orgone energy and orgasms and all of these things, they started putting him into this, you know, he's talking about these bad subjects that blah, blah, blah. And they start to burn his name because they don't want people to start looking up his technology. 
Right. That's what always happens. They do this bait and switch with everything. And they did that with Nikola Tesla too. You know, they said that he was a crazy and whatever else, but he was only a crazy when he created cars that could run on the earth's energy for free. <laughs> That's when he became the crazy person. You know, it right. wasn't the time before when he gave all those inventions to, let's say the United States government and whatever else. But before that, he was completely sane. But once he started creating free things and really taking his is in his intelligence to another level, then all of a sudden he became crazy. And that was the same thing with Wilhelm Reich. I love uh, his cloud buster, Wilhelm Reich's. Like, like and the, I was there's some that. people we know that, that have one. Yeah, and, and they work wonders. And what's funny is, guess what he connected to? Primary water. Those mm -hmm. were plugged in when he used those in Maine. And it's funny because they put it all the way in Maine, like all the way far away from the general public and the museum. Right. And everything's all very far, far, far. If you go to their social media page, your internet will turn off. I've had that happen as well, too, because <laughs> it's you're pinging to a certain, you know, to a certain database. Um, but it was interesting because his cloud buster was connected to primary water because he just basically had a, eth a big ether antenna and he would take the end of it, plug it right into a water vein or a creek, and that would charge it and give it that energy. And yeah. he didn't have to use anything and he could clean up all the nonsense that they keep putting up into the air. Right. And, you know, that was one thing that also, if you look into Trevor James Constable. Oh, I love him. He was a great soul. But yeah. his website yesterday was just taken down. So this, no. Yeah, the rain, it's called the rain. I had it on my thing. But it's like etherecrain.org. Yeah. He had that company he had created with that guy in Taiwan. And no other, you know, he could make it rain anywhere. And nowhere, um, no other country would pick it up. Well, I mean, other countries did, like in the Far East and that. Yeah, and he was a great soul and did a lot, and he cleared up all the smog in uh, California as well in the 1980s with, I think, Operation Clincher and all of that. He did all of that to help clean up all of that, and his stuff showed he just had cones. It was nothing crazy. I still have all his pictures and everything, but just cones. He'd put them on top of his car, and he would drive down the highway, and it would clean up the air, and just you could do stuff to, you know, alter the ether that's all around us, and that's what Wilhelm Reich talked about, too. Like, it's all around us spinning in all different directions, and we just have to get in tune to it. And that's where the pyramid energy comes into as well. When you sit in the pyramid, it's made out of certain materials, such as magnetic and non-magnetic materials mm -hmm. that resonate at a frequency to create negative ions to heal the body. And if you chant in that area, which when a person is chanting in these devices, then you increase that, that ether and that energy that's all around us. And then it enhances the energy and the magnetism of that. And it was interesting because um, in relation to Wilhelm Reich, there was another guy named Les Brown. And Les Brown was basically building these devices with just pyramids alone in which he could preserve food indefinitely. He would mm -hmm. take a whole bunch of pyramids and he would stack them on top of each other. And he'd put like eggs on top and they would basically preserve forever. And he'd put meat on top of there. Same thing. It would never go bad. Because it was interesting because it's creating a vortex. And that's what a lot of this, this ether and magnetism that's around us or orgone, whichever you want to call it, it's just basically, basically causing these spirals and everything to spin all different directions at the same time, which then is giving you that free energy. And the easiest way to ever just see ether, because everyone always asks, well, what is it and how do you see it, mm -hmm. is go out in the, in the middle of the day at about 12 o'clock and lay in the sun, close your eyes underneath the sun so that the sun is still beaming down on your forehead, and then open your eyes. Not Don't look directly at the sun, but just open your eyes, and you will start to see all the little floating. It looks like little white things, and they'll yeah. just all be floating they all. Call, they call them in Vastu Bayans. They even had a measurement for it in India. Huh. Little ones, they keep like going like, like that. Yeah, they just look like little, like little, just little, like. Little tiny light. Dots of light. Yeah, and that's the easiest way to just say, there it is. And then shortly, 30 seconds later, you won't see it anymore. You, mm -hmm. your, your, your frequency will go back to what it originally was, and mm -hmm. you won't be able to see it. But I always wondered what those were. And then when I got into Wilhelm Reich's work and all of his books and read a bunch of them, then I started understanding, okay, this kind of makes sense. you know. And I never knew what that was, but it does make sense that there is this energy or these vortexes or all, all these things all around us but we're just not picking up on them because we never learn any of these people in school 
and we never learn about them after school, right? right? Because we continuously are repeating these holidays and all this nonsense that we were programmed in in school and everything else. So a lot of the stuff, if you look back into it, you know, until you look back into it, you're like, wow, that kind of, that kind of makes sense. Why were we never taught about this? Versus mm-hmm. reality, you were wasting my time with all this other nonsense that was off to the side and whatever it may be. So I had, I used to have uh, this um, videotape of Wilhelm, of, um, uh, of Trevor Constable um, on a ship, because he was always an admiral and always with these big ships. And he had his um, uh, rainmaking machine and he was there. So he would put it, it was a 12 hour video. It would go to the left, it make it rain for an hour. Yep. And he would stop and he put it to the right. I mean, it was just unbelievable that he could be so precise on it. Yeah. And he looking just, for it and can't find it. I'll, I think I still have the video, so I'll send it to you because I found another okay. documentary with him that I'll oh, send. Oh, good. Okay. Um, that goes through. It's one hour long and then he shows it making it rain in the last 20 minutes. Yeah. But uh, it was interesting because, yeah, they just look like cones. They yeah. weren't anything too special. He literally yeah. just says it looks like a, like a cone and it just spins. And yeah either just spinning. So basically what I learned was if there's a pattern going on above us, like let's say everything's spinning clockwise, mm-hmm. then what you would do is you would use these devices and spin counterclockwise. Oh, and okay. That would create basically the vortex or the current, whichever okay. word you like to call it. And then that would cause it to start ringing. And he would be able to do that. Or he could clean up if there was a lot of like chemicals and fog and all this nonsense put into the air as well too. Uh-huh. He clean that up as well too with these devices and he could do it from anywhere he was like out on a ship they showed like from miles away and he would just clean up the whole area and that's how they cleaned up the smog in the 1980s they cleaned up all the smog in california just using his technology and Mm -hmm. then after that they were like okay we'll just say we changed the cars because that's what they said they said we changed the emissions on the cars and that changed it but in reality he cleaned it all up just using etheric antennas or etheric um, you know, weather devices. So, <laughs> well, this was another great interview. It's an hour again, but uh, there's so much information. So thank you so much. And um, you want to give your website again, because you've got all these great products and videos. And- yeah. So you can look at our website. It's cultivateelevate.com. Mm-hmm. And we have, uh, we're also on Rumble. We're on YouTube and Telegram and Instagram as well. But yeah, if anybody's interested in any of our products, all of our products are different superfoods to help heal the body at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. And each time we release something new, like we just released Pearl and Dragon's Blood not too long ago, we just did Shilajot tablets. Each thing is basically put together to heal different parts of the body. Mm -hmm. So for example, Pearl is great for the eyes, the bones, the teeth, you know, the, 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 the base of the body. And then Dragon's Blood is really good for the blood of the body because we need blood tonics and clean out all the stuff that's sitting in the blood. Shilajot's really great at providing the body with 84 of 102 minerals because we're heavily depleted on our minerals. But mm-hmm. everything in which we release is in order to try to, in my opinion, counter the nonsense in which we face because certain foods are certain foods give certain organs the nutrients that they need. And that's what I try to study into. So for example, if your brain is not feeling okay, Lion's mane can work really well for regenerating regenerating those neural pathways and Mm -hmm. getting the brain kickstarted again. So each thing, it's interesting because when you look at certain of these foods, they look like the organs in which are in our body or Uh like the image. So it's like, then maybe we should eat like that. Just like carrots look like eyes and are really great for the eyes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just little things like that. But all of our products, we make sure they're all organic. They're tested for everything. You know, we make sure like very, very pure because... We want to make sure that everybody's eating the highest quality superfoods when they're trying to heal their body and elevate their health. Okay. So it's cultivate, elevate, right? Yes. that's it. And there's really great um, videos on all kinds of things. As you can imagine from these two talks, there's so much information. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Another great one. Till next time.